Hi folks, I've just gone through the process of creating a new header image for my YouTube channel here. And it was quite a useful exercise in um, editing images in Photoshop, um, working with layers, adding text and modifying text. And of course, um, the process of actually uploading a header into YouTube. So I thought I would go through the process again, recording it um, just as a demo video. So here we go. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to go in and uh, within my channel, um, select the camera icon to change my image. Now, before I do that, if we look down here, we can see that the recommended size is 2560 pixels by 1440 pixels with a maximum file size of 6 megabytes. So I'm going to go now across to Photoshop and here is an image which I've already opened that more or less fits the bill. Um, and if I go to image size, you'll see I've already sized it. Um, so let's cancel that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go um, step backwards, edit, step backwards, edit, step backwards. How about taking the image size back? Now, one more. There we go. Okay, so this is the original size image we have here. Let's just um, use the magnifying and the um, Alt button to bring it down in size a little bit so we can see what we're working with. So if I go up to image size, we can see this is um, four and a half thousand pixels width. And I can also tell you it's the wrong aspect ratio. So we'll deal with those one at a time. The first thing we want to do is change the image size. So if I go to image size, and remember we want it 2560 pixels wide. So let's change that, 2560. And you'll see this is 1714 rather than 1440. This little chain here means that the aspect ratio, ratio is linked. So you can see, as I change the width, the height changes automatically to keep the aspect ratio the same. If I unlink them, it doesn't. And we end up with a highly distorted image, which is not what we want. So let's relink them again. And whoop, it's gone back to 560. Oh, okay, so there we go. So that's our width correct. We now have an image of the correct width, but it's not the, um, the correct height. So what I'm now going to do is go up to my rectangular marquee. And I've selected fixed ratio up here. You can see normal fixed ratio. Now you can set this to anything you want. You can see I preset this to 256 by 144. You can't set to um, 2560 because that's um, too many digits. And remember, this is, this is just a ratio. As long as the ratios are the same, it doesn't actually matter what the actual figures are. So 256. 144 is obviously the same as 2560-1440. So let's take our marquee and we'll drag it down. There we go. So we have our marquee, but that's not necessarily where you want it. So we can click in the middle of it and we can drag it down. I personally want the bottom part of this image because I, I like the reflections. And then I'm going to go back up to image and select image crop there. Okay, so we now have our cropped image, the correct aspect ratio, and the correct number of pixels in terms of height and width. 
but what I don't have is I don't have any text on it. So I'll just click off it to get rid of that selection. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to add a text layer. If we look across the layers layer here, we see we've only got the background layer. I want to add some text. So I'm going to cross the text tool down here, select that. And as soon as I click on the image, you'll see it's immediately created a text layer here. We know it's a text layer because it's got T in the middle of it and it's layer one. I could rename it, but I'm only going to create two layers here, so I'm going to know what they are. If I ended up working with 10, 12, 14 layers, then I probably would name them to stop it getting too confusing. But even I can hold three layers in my head, so we'll work with that. Now, um, I'm going to use this for the, uh, the Colin Monroe Photography logo. So I want, I particularly like, and you can see here, I've got the Arial font selected um, and I tend to like brush script standard. Um, I, I like the kind of handwritten feel to it. And just from practice, I know that 24 points going to be a bit small for what I want. So I'll try 36 points. I can always adjust it after. So let's see how that works. So I'll just type this out yeah and that's pretty much what I want not exactly in the position I want it so I'm going to cross to the select tool here and you'll see that's immediately put a box around it with handles on the horizontal and vertical lines and on all four corners and you can see I've actually got the, the tool showing the I can um, reshape or move um, on the mouse. So I'm just going to move that a little bit to roughly where I think I want it. Now, one of the things I know from experience um, in terms of creating a YouTube header, that although they are saying it's 1440 pixels high, Depending on the device, not all of that image is going to show. That is for showing on a TV screen where it will show the entire heading, or entire header, should I say. But on a laptop or mobile device, it's only going to show as a narrow band. So because of that, I want to compress all my text into a narrow band here, because that is going to be the band that's going to show on laptop and mobile devices headers, which are, I suspect, for my viewers, where, and maybe for you too, where the majority of viewers are going to come from. Now, I haven't actually transformed it at all here. Um, I probably want to. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit in size. There we go. That's about where I want it. Now, as soon as I transform, before I can do anything else, I have to go up to the transform tool and apply the transformation. I can't perform any other tasks in Photoshop until I decide that I want to go ahead with that. So there, I'll do that. I'm going to leave that there for the moment and I'm going to create a second text layer. So I come across the text tool and I'm going to stick this below. And you can immediately see I as soon as I clicked on the, uh, the main image, I have a second text layer appear here. Now I'm going to use this for my website URL, so I want something that looks a little bit more formal and I know a lot of people don't like Arial. I personally do, so that's what I'm going to go with. And I want the font for this because it's, it's kind of like a subheading. I want this to be smaller, so I'm going to come down see what 24 point looks like. I'm also going to put the caps lock on, lock on because I want this all to be capitalized. Okay, I think I want something a little bit smaller than that. I could, using transform, make it smaller. Um, but let's try it with text. Um, text point size, should I say. There we go. Put the handles on it again. Drag it across. Now I want this to be slightly smaller than the column and row photography that's above it. 
So I'm going to pick one of the corner handles and just drag like that. And dragging one of the corner handles will more or less keep the aspect ratio the same. If I drag one of the horizontal or vertical ones, that will change the aspect ratio. And I don't particularly want to change that much. OK, so we have those in place. And I think that's more or less where I want them. So again, because I've transformed that text, I need to apply the transformation. Now, the second thing I want to do is I want the text uh, not to be 100% opaque. I want some of the background image to show through. I tend, until I've got them in position, I tend to leave the opacity at 100%. It just makes them clearer to see while I'm moving them around. The other reason is the opacity that works depends very much on the brightness of the part of the image behind. Um, opacity that's right down about 20% will show up quite strongly against a dark background, but you may need it up at 50 or 60%. The background behind is quite light if you have white text like this. So until you've got it in your final position, you don't really want to change the opacity. There, and it's about 55%, and I think that works for me. And changing the opacity does not transform the image, so I don't have to apply anything after that. I can go down to, I back down to the layer column and row uh, photography that's in the brush script. Now, notice although that's above in the image, the layers are um, below one another, so you've, you've kind of got to remember that. and Whatever transformations, whatever changes you're making, you've got to make sure your work is on the active layer that you're actually performing these. So we'll go to opacity here again. And yeah, about 60. It's a slightly brighter part of the image that that's on. So in order to particularly get the end of photography to show, I'm actually going to come up about 65% as opposed to 50. But you can see the difference there. If I go to column of photography, that's only 55% opacity, whereas above is 65 but actually it's the one below that's standing out more strongly because of the image behind it is darker. Okay, so I have my text roughly where I want it. I have my image the right size, the right aspect ratio. The final thing I need to do um, before uploading to YouTube is to flatten my image, save as a JPEG, and then move across to YouTube to upload. But one thing I'm going to do before that is I'm going to save this image with all the layers. So I several options. I could save it as a TIFF. I could save it as a PNG. But I'm actually going to save it as a Photoshop, a PSD image, because that's the default for, for layers. Uh, you can't save layers in JPEG. It will flatten, flatten the image. So it will default to, to PSD. Okay, so let's go save as and YouTube header one LRS for layers, just my particular code. And I'm going to save it in this test folder. And you can see it's saving as a Photoshop image. Okay, just click accept. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that um, whenever you create text or graphics on an image, there are times in the future when you 
want to come back and change it, particularly with uploading a header onto YouTube because you can't see exactly what it looks like until you've got it up there and then you think, hmm, that text isn't in quite the right place, so I need to move that, need to be bigger, larger, move it up, move it down, whatever. And once it's flattened as a JPEG, you can no longer do that. So it's a really good idea to keep the, the text in separate layers that you can manipulate in the future if you want. And this applies not just to things like um, YouTube headers, it applies to business cards, flyers, any documents that you feel you may want to change in the future. Okay, so we've done that. So I'm now going to flatten my image. So I now go to layers, flatten image. There we go. And now to save as. Now, you've got to be careful here because again, it's defaulting to Photoshop. So we want to change that to JPEG. And I'm going to get rid of the layers because this no longer has layers. Again, that's just my personal preference for understanding what's there. And save. I'm going to save this at quality 9, which is pretty good. If, uh, if I wanted a really high quality image, I would uh, normally save at quality 11. But this is just going up on the web. It doesn't need to be that high quality. This keeps the file size down, so I'm going to go for, for quality 9. There we go. Okay, so let's head back across to YouTube. And I'm using Firefox here, but you could be using any browser. And I'm going to select a photo from my computer. Okay, so if you remember, I added, these are ones I created previously. Um, I added the header one JPEG, header one PSD. Now just look at the difference here. If we bring this one up, you can see the Photoshop layer is 21.5 megabytes. So if we go down here, we see it's, it's, a, it's way over the, um, image maximum file size for YouTube anyway, so it would be rejected. And that's partly because it's coding far more detail within the layers and it's coding for the layers itself. JPEG by default applies a lot more compression. So let's look at the JPEG by comparison and you can see without the layers and with higher, with uh, JPEG compression applied, it's only 673 kilobytes. So easily works. Okay, so let's open that. Let it upload. And there we go. Okay, so there's our desktop or laptop, our TV and our mobile device. So you can see here why I was careful to keep the text within a narrow band can see doesn't really matter for a television but on a desktop or a laptop we just have this narrow band of the image showing and you can see here the text is nicely in it within the mobile device maybe it's crop it's just a little bit too close to the edge maybe it's a little bit too wide what I would actually do is I would uh, if I was doing this for real I would upload it so which is what I'm going to do. So just select and it's really changing it now. Okay, so for my laptop, my MacBook, that works fine. Maybe looking at this, I, I may think I want to um, um, increase the opacity of this a little bit here just to make that stand out. Maybe not, maybe I'd live with it. But I would then do is I look on my phone and see how the crop is working here. And if it's if it's just clipping the edge here or it's too close to the edge for my liking for aesthetic reasons, then I may go back to my Photoshop image, move the text a little bit, shrink the text down, whatever, 
to create something that I that works better and then re-upload it, which is just one example of why I would keep a Photoshop master out, if you like. Okay, folks, hopefully that was helpful. Mm -hmm.